It was one of the most ambitious and expensive engineering feats ever attempted. A massive double-deck bridge stretching over eight miles, carrying 10 lanes of traffic and linking two of California's busiest cities. Then disaster struck. A catastrophic earthquake shook the Bay Area, exposing the bridge's vulnerabilities and setting off a reconstruction effort that would take more than a decade and cost a staggering $6.5 billion. How do you replace California's longest bridge span, a structure that 280,000 people rely on daily without bringing an entire city to a standstill? The story of the Bay Bridge isn't just about steel and concrete. It's a tale filled with unexpected twists. The US Navy, FBI investigations, sea lions, and even Arnold Schwarzenegger. But the way the bridge was demolished and rebuilt that's the most incredible part, the forgotten landmark of San Francisco. Ask anyone about San Francisco's bridges and they'll probably picture the Golden Gate Bridge, an iconic orange marvel that dominates postcards and movies. But another bridge, the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, has been just as vital to the region, despite often living in its more famous sibling's shadow. This double-decked engineering giant stretches across the bay connecting San Francisco, Oakland, and the East Bay as part of Interstate 80. It's one of the widest bridges in the world, designed to handle an immense flow of traffic. Yet its history is just as fascinating as the city it serves. A vision dating back to the gold rush. The dream of bridging San Francisco and Oakland isn't new. By the time the gold rush was in full swing, the idea gained serious traction. San Francisco, fearing economic decline after the Transcontinental Railroad reached Oakland in 1869, saw the need for a direct connection to the booming East Bay. Then came one of the strangest champions of the bridge, Emperor Joshua Norton. A San Francisco eccentric who had declared himself Emperor of the United States, Norton issued an imperial decree in 1872 demanding the construction of a Bay Bridge. He even threatened the city's leaders, stating, we do hereby command the arrest by the army of both the boards of city fathers if they persist in neglecting our decrees. While Norton had no actual authority, his vision for a bridge was surprisingly forward thinking. But it wasn't until the rise of automobiles in the 1920s that the Bay Bridge project finally became a reality. And from there, its story only got crazier. The race to build the Bay Bridge began in 1929 when California lawmakers finally took serious steps to make it happen. The state legislature created the California Toll Bridge Authority, which acted on earlier proposals. Construction officially kicked off in July 1933, and in just three years and five months, the bridge was complete. On November 12, 1936, the Bay Bridge opened to the public just six months before the Golden Gate Bridge. Former President Herbert Hoover called it the greatest bridge yet constructed in the world. The total cost was $77 million, a staggering figure at the time, but nowhere near today's infrastructure costs. But this is not the same bridge that opened in 1936. An earthquake changed everything. On October 17, 1989, at exactly 5.04 p.m., the Loma Prieta earthquake shook the Bay Area with a magnitude of 6.9. The disaster killed 63 people, injured over 3,700, and damaged more than 80 bridges, including the Bay Bridge. A 76 by 50 foot section of the upper deck collapsed onto the lower deck, tragically taking one life. The force of the quake shifted the bridge's frame by seven inches, shearing off bolts and exposing just how vulnerable the structure had become. Caltrans had been warning officials about the bridge's crack-prone I-bar design for years, but the earthquake turned quiet concerns into an urgent crisis. Engineers knew that another earthquake could be even worse. 
with a 70% probability of a major quake striking the region in the next 30 years, the Bay Bridge was now a ticking time bomb. Retrofitting wasn't enough. The eastern span had to be replaced. Replacing a bridge that carries 280,000 people every day without bringing the Bay Area to a standstill was a monumental challenge. Caltrans devised an audacious plan. Build a new bridge, demolish the old one in stages, and keep traffic flowing the entire time. The corridor schedule team was formed to oversee 21 separate contracts, analyzing every possible risk. Every step of the process had to be precisely coordinated to avoid cascading delays. To keep vehicles moving, Caltrans introduced two critical detours. The Yerba Buena Island detour allowed traffic to bypass the old roadway, making space for demolition and new construction. The Oakland touchdown detour ensured a seamless transition into the new bridge. These maneuvers allowed the project to move forward while minimizing disruptions, a rare feat in large-scale infrastructure projects. The Bay Bridge reconstruction was one of the most complex engineering challenges of the 20th century. The new span had to stand 135 feet above the water at its tallest point, tapering down to 40 feet as it reached the shore. Engineers had to account for shifting tides and unpredictable weather. Strict environmental regulations required that all bridge segments be removed between November and April to avoid disturbing migratory birds, adding another layer of urgency. One of the biggest challenges lay in securing the bridge's foundation. The central anchorage had to be sunk 265 feet below water to reach solid bedrock, a task made possible by an innovative multi-dome caisson. Even accessing construction sites proved difficult. Caltrans faced a year-long struggle to get permission from the U.S. Navy just to conduct geological testing on Yerba Buena Island, causing significant delays. The final implosions. Over the course of the demolition, more than 58,200 tons, 59,133 metric tons, of steel and approximately 245,000 tons, 248,931 metric tons of concrete were removed from the old eastern span. On September 8, 2018, a series of controlled implosions marked the official end of the demolition. The last remaining structures, Pier E19 and Pier E20, were successfully removed from San Francisco Bay, completing a remarkable transformation that had begun with the new span's construction between 2002 and 2013. A bridge for the future. During the early stages of the project, Kenneth Terpstra of Caltrans predicted, when this project opens to the public, they will be awed by what they behold. His words proved true. Since its completion, the Bay Bridge has thrived handling increasing traffic volumes while providing commuters with a smoother ride and breathtaking views. The bridge stands as a symbol of human ingenuity and collaboration, built to last for generations to come, all without ever stopping traffic. And so, the story of the longest U.S. bridge span removal comes to a close, making way for something even greater. What do you think of this incredible engineering achievement? Share your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and take care out there.